Welcome to QDL. QDL is your look at who and what is making news in the world of quality. I'm Dirk Ducharme, Editor-in-Chief of Quality Digest. Today we're at Nikon's booth at IMTS in Chicago, and we're going to look at a variety of equipment that Nikon is showing uh, in the booth today. So, and with me right now is Mike Wolf, District Sales Manager of Industrial Systems for Nikon. And uh, Mike, first up, what do we got? Yeah, thank you. So what we're looking at here is our measuring microscope, model MM400. It's a benchtop high accuracy microscope for inspection and measuring. So we can take uh, samples of a variety of sizes and place them on there and do measurement, inspection, take pictures, uh, quality control instrument. So it, basically that's kind of it in a nutshell. Okay. Um, what, kind of, uh, what kind of accuracy? Yeah, the, so again, I should mention that we can put different stages on here all the way up to 10 by 6 in travel. Accuracy is down into the single digit micron range. Okay, and uh, objectives? Yep, the lenses we have for this particular version are uh, single lens mount toolmakers lenses with a long working distance, very flat field from 1x to 100x, which in turn gives us up to 1000x magnification. Uh, we have a turret system that has a similar magnification range, but uses five or six lenses that can be interchanged as you're without taking one out and putting one in. Okay, um, can you demo it for us? Yeah, absolutely. So the user would typically you know, put their sample on the stage and you know, they could do an alignment, look at the sample either in the eyepieces or on a, a monitor, and they can simply come to an area on the, on the sample. If they wanted to know the, the width of that particular strut there, they could simply zero out the x-axis move over to the other side and very quickly read how far they moved. There are other geometries you can put in there, lines, circles, distances, and so forth. Okay. Um, what kind of volume? Yeah, uh, so the big brother to this stand is our MM800. We can put a 10 by 6 XY, 8 inch Z. Okay. And finally, what, what kind of applications typically are we seeing with this? Yeah, uh, a, a, big, a big variety. Um, anything from tooling to metalworking of all types, screw machine, stampings, um, plastics, all the way through up to some high precision semiconductor inspection applications. Okay, uh, and then moving down to this next piece, uh, so this is a little interesting because I think everybody knows Nikon for optics, right? I mean, that's what Nikon's known for is optics, and yet this isn't optical, this is a height gauge. Exactly. No, it's, it's a good point. I think the interesting thing of that is, though, that we use some of the technology that we develop to build our mechanics on the other instruments that we make into this tool. So, for example, we actually build the linear encoders on our XY stages. And so that technology lends itself very well to a tool such as this, which has an encoder built into it. So it's a digital height gauge or digital indicator with very high accuracy, low pressure, very repeatable, um, accuracies down to submicron, oh, wow. and resolution out to 0 0.01 micron. Okay, and kind of the connection for micron is I think these are glass scales, right? That's a linear encoder uh, li built linear into that. Maybe yep. that. Okay, all right. Uh, okay, um, something uh, more traditional here. Optical comparator. Yeah. yeah, we still make these and they're still used by a variety of industries. I'm amazed at how many of these we sell. This has been around forever since, you know, probably a hundred years this type of an instrument's been made. Uh, this is our V12, it's a vertical machine, so we look down on the sample and project the image off of a mirror inside this instrument onto a screen. Uh, direct image, beautiful reflected light image, uh, we, we gather that by actually bringing light through the lens as opposed to shining light obliquely onto a sample. So we use our microscope technology and our optics technology to into a, a projector to give you a beautiful image. So that's a, that is what it's a little bit different from op optical compared typically is those are just projecting light from the bottom. Uh, so it's a little unusual to be able to, actually this allows you to make measurements what directly on the surface yeah, as good, opposed to just the, the outside, good right? Good point, you know, yeah. most comparators you'll see out there are bringing light as a shadow mode and right. you know, from beneath. So you'd see the surface as a dark, black sample and, and the, the, you'd see the edge of that, but 
Because we have such good optics, we can actually show you an amazing reflected light image and pick out features on the surface to be able to measure. Okay, and also you have a turret here with multiple objectives as we well. We do, so. this one has a three lens turret, so we can bring uh, a variety of lenses into the field. So we can go up to actually, this microscope can go up to 500X. It's the only comparator in the world that we can put a 500X lens on. And what about um, stage options? Uh, very similar to the measuring microscope in that we can put from a two by two up to a 10 by six XY stage. Um, and I, obviously I think we should talk about the build a little bit. These are very, uh, very rugged. I think you told me earlier that this is all matched material. Yeah, I'm good. assuming what you mean, uh, the coefficient of expansion is equal throughout, so no, no torquing and stuff is... is yeah, uh, that's correct. And yeah. So most times these are going right out on a shop floor and where the environment is not controlled. And so we have a cast base and cast column and we use a steel alloy stage that's matched very nicely to that, the material of the base, so that as the temperature changes, everything moves together. And it's not, you know, some, not an aluminum stage on a steel frame. Um, it's all matched perfectly, so it, and it's an instrument that's gonna be out there and last you for 30, 40, 50 years. Okay, and let's just talk about the digital readout a little bit. This yeah. is, looks like this was the same digital readout we saw on the, the measuring microscope. But, yes, um, it can be, yeah. yeah. And, and I think the interesting thing with that is that we have some options on the microscope, or the comparator, I should say, whereas I can put a, a panel in here with XY. So whereas if when we're moving the XY, it could display right here. If somebody wants a compact system, they don't want a separate readout, you can actually do that here. The other really nice thing about this tool is I can put a digital protractor here and have a screen rotation. So that as you rotate the screen and the crosshair, you're measuring that angle. So you can very quickly move from one line to another and measure angle. And the angle to show up on the, on the display. It will, okay. yep. Degrees, minutes, seconds, or decimal degrees. This particular readout is a little more advanced than just an XY readout in that I can store program steps or I can do distances and lines and circles and more geometry. I can electronically skew the part and those items as well. Perfect. Uh, well, let's move over to this instrument over here. Yeah, this is our SMZ25 research grade stereo microscope. And we're featuring on this microscope our latest digital camera. This is our newest and most advanced digital microscope camera, our Digital Sight 10, our DS10. The beauty of it is it uses our, we've adopted the technology from our digital SLR cameras in that it's an FX CMOS camera with a huge chip. So we're able to see incredibly large fields of view and get amazing resolution as well as color representation. So it's a 24 megapixel camera. Okay. And um, it's mounted on? Uh, what, what one of your stereo microscopes at the moment? Yeah, this is our highest end, this is our top of the line stereo microscope, our SMZ25. It's a 25 to one zoom microscope. It's a fully automated microscope in that we have a motorized zoom, motorized focus, and it is on a very heavy duty platform stand. And we have a control pad here that allowing us to control all those functions. Okay. And the, Im the importance, of, just for somebody like me, the importance of this really nice camera on this instrument is what? What do you get with the combination of those? Yeah, it's really all about resolution. Okay. So the optical resolution from this microscope combined with that camera, and as well as the field of view. So where we're not sacrificing the field of view or resolution, by going out to a lower field of view because we have this amazing technology in the camera. Okay, got it. Um, so uh, show us how the microscope works here. Yeah, so what you may be used to on a microscope is, are the knobs and, and dials and so forth, but we've put everything into this control box over here. Okay. So the most basic functions are the, the optical zoom. So as you see on the, the live image there, this up and down arrow will allow us to zoom in and out on the sample. And then we have our focus knobs on either side of the controller. And then there are other things for uh, taking pictures and setting illumination and so forth. And what about functions like uh, stitching or infinite focus or stacked focus? Um, yeah, great, very, you guys very popular. Okay. And 
with the use of the camera and our software, then we have the ability to do some very basic functions like taking pictures, uh, measurements, annotations, and so forth. But the ones you uh, mentioned are very popular. So our standard software allows us to move the sample around and create an entire montage or a large stitched image. Um, the extended depth of focus or the Z stacking is another function that works amazingly well with this microscope in that we have the motorized focus. So I took the liberty earlier of creating uh, one of those. And so what, you've, what I've done is I've taken a stack of about 15 or 20 images and created one in focus image. So it's moving, it's moving in the Z direction, focusing at individual steps and stacking all those images yeah, together. Yeah, it takes okay. a picture at each one okay. and then it creates an in focus image. And then with that image, I can then call up a three-dimensional view of that. Okay. So oh, with that 3D view then, okay. I have the ability to do a profile of that. I can print this out or I could create a movie if I wanted to. And typically, what are the applications for this? Who's using this? Yeah, so on the, on the higher end like this, it, it might be a research lab or a material science Materials application or semiconductor. But with regard to stereo microscopes and cameras in general, it's a wide variety. It could be anywhere from a uh, metalworking uh, shop to, you know, medical device, stampings, you know, a variety. Could be just about anyone. Okay, yeah. perfect. And uh, finally, let's move down to this, uh, the, the Nexif down yeah. here. And uh, thanks to uh, Mike for showing us uh, those pieces of Nikon instruments. Uh, and with us now is Benu Singh, Business Development Manager with Nikon. And we're looking at the Nexif. Nexiv, this is actually the VMZ system. Okay. This is our latest iteration. It's the fourth generation for Nikon's uh, non-contact measurement systems. Okay. It's designed for fast non-contact measurement. And uh, some differences with the uh, previous version. Yeah, because we, we've covered the Nexiv before, so we've this is brand new. We've covered the Nexiv before. This is brand new. Okay. And uh, it's more accurate. Okay. It's faster and all brand new electronics, and there's some other uh, major significant changes here as well. Okay, so when you say more accurate, can you kind of quantify that a little bit? Absolutely, the linear encoders are actually Nikon's own developed linear encoders. Okay. Uh, they're high resolution down to 10 nanometers. Okay. Uh, the um, optics are uh, Nikon optics, so they're very low distortion, high numerical aperture, so they're letting in a lot of lighting for a very clear, non-distorted picture. Uh, also, you said faster, so what does that mean? It is faster, so the electronics are faster in here. The uh, software has been revamped to process faster, so the measurements are actually executing faster. Okay. And what are some of the, the stage options now? Because I understand that there's some differences now, or additions from, from the last Nexus. So with the VMZ, that is one of the newer options, is it comes in a larger stage size okay. uh, in between. So before we had this small stage size, and we had a large one. Now we have a medium one. So this is 300 by 200 millimeters. Now we have a 450 by 400. So there's a medium stage size option. And there's also different uh, uh, magnification options. Okay. So those are new also. So, so um, uh, this has got what one just one one lens that that can be uh, can it be replaced or this is the a single lens and then the different magnification options with that lens. So this is a single lens. You you make that decision at the time of purchase. They're not what what, what you're going to need. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, feature sizes that you're measuring. Okay. As a matter of fact. Um, this is a standard system with kind of a mid-range magnification. We also have a special VMZ that goes all the way up to 120x optically, so it's an ultra-high magnification. With that, you can measure line widths down to a micron. Wow, okay. Um, so, kind of show us, what you've got a routine running here, so uh, what is this demonstrating right now? So it's a vision system. We got the part on the stage, and it's going through the, it's being magnified by the optics. That image is being caught at the camera, it's being digitized, and then the software takes over from there to make the measurements, to make very fast, accurate, and repeatable measurements. So here, this measurement routine is doing two things. It's just to show uh, alignment. Right. So when you go to those crosses, it's showing the automation part of the tool. Automated because we put the part on and it's able to locate the part. So you don't have to locate it yourself. It, as long as you get it within the field of view, it 
it, it can automatically locate. That's exactly right. And that okay. is so important because there could be part-to-part -part variation, fixture-to-fixture -fixture variation, or even uh, operator error when they put it down. And if they put it down and move it around, it'll still find it. Even if they rotate it, it'll be able to correct for that as well. Okay. So it'll know. So the first part of this program right here is doing the alignment. So it's doing setting an origin, setting an axis, and then it's just doing some basic diameter measurements. Now we had to slow it down so we could see it update. Yeah. But really it'd go through all 71 circles with that and you wouldn't be able to tell. Oh, you, so it can it. run faster than what it's doing. So we're at 30% right now. Oh jeez. <laughs> okay. And we slow it down yeah. for the show so that people could appreciate. Yeah. It. So they wouldn't think it's fake. Exactly. <laughs> like, you can't be going that fast. Hey, what happened? Well, we measured a circle. <laughs> yeah, wow. Wait, wait, we're done. Um, now what if you had like a, a I don't know, if you wanted to measure multiple parts, could you put in like a, a, I don't know, a tray of parts with multiple parts so you can kind of measure more in one, in one setting? Absolutely, so the bread and butter for this is the automation, okay. whether it's a single part or a tray of parts. The nice thing about the tray of parts, not only would it automatically go through them, uh, it'll check the pocket to see if there's actually a part there. Okay. If there's not a part, it'll skip to the next pocket. Um, as well as it'll do a judgment on each part. And the nice thing is with the auto measure software, that's what we call our software, there's a lot of control the user has. If you fail a tolerance, what do you want to do? Do you want me to record it and just continue? Or do you want me to separate this part out? Also new is the fact that if you fail a tolerance on a feature, it can take a high resolution image and save that and, okay. show, you, and show you all the errors. So you have all the pictures with the errors. In okay. So that's a very nice feature as well. Interesting. Um, so I understand also there were changes in, or additions to the lighting, or changes in, in the lighting system? There is, big changes. So uh, the previous versions used to be halogen light. Okay. And there's a couple of things with halogen. One, you have to replace them regularly. Yeah. Two, they run warm. Yeah. So <laughs> that could, right, that has yeah. some effect on your part. And then uh, three, there's always a small uh, delay built into a halogen system to let it come to a stable light. Uh, okay. Now it's all LEDs, top light, bottom light, ring lights are all LED. They're long life, so you never have to worry about replacing them. And they're instant on and off. That also contributes to the faster run. Sure. In addition to the uh, all LED lights, this ring light also has a new position. It comes down, but it comes down to two iterations. So it changes that angle for that dark field inspection. That's also new on this system. All right. Well, Ben New, appreciate it. Thanks for your thanks, time. Thanks a lot. Nice to be here. And uh, also thanks to the rest of the folks, uh, Mike Wolf and the rest of the folks at the Nikon booth for allowing us to come in and shoot all this great equipment. Um, that is it for QDL. Uh, if you have any other items you'd like to see, people you'd like to bring, in us, uh, bring on the show, just let us know. Send us an email to qdl at qualitydigest.com and we'll do our best. And thanks for joining us. See you at the next QDL.